Here in the Smart Grid Lab, we've been doing very exciting things in terms of research towards smart grids, particularly using the optimal power flow as a means to control distributed energy sources in distribution networks. We've been focusing not just on the academic side of the optimal power flow, but how to implement it in a very realistic environment. So perhaps in a few years, industry can implement it in their control rooms. Distributed energy sources are appearing everywhere in the world. Wind farms or PV farms, electric vehicles, we're talking about storage, utility scale and small scale. This means that they are being connected to a network that has not been designed to cater for all these technologies at once. And therefore, there are significant operational and planning issues that we have to deal with these days. Given that we will have all these technologies, and we actually have them in many countries already, how can we deal with the problems that they are causing or will cause in the near future? One way is simply making the network stronger. So this is reinforcing the assets. This can, however, be very expensive and not necessarily the most clever solution. Another option is to actually manage these distributed energy resources. Controlling these elements, however, is not as easy as it sounds. At the moment that you have thousands of solar photovoltaic systems, then this is very complex. This is where more advanced techniques come into place. The optimal power flow is, in simple terms, an optimization problem that has been known for years and that encapsulates the physics of the network. The problem is that for decades, this mathematical formulation has been limited in its scalability and its speed to solve really, really large and complex problems, particularly when it comes to smart grids in the context of distribution networks. We've been working in the last few years in the development of a control room environment in which we are able to demonstrate that the OPF can operate in real time not only distributed energy resources, but also the distribution network. Our control room is as realistic as it gets. We have used a real-time simulator, which is able to capture the operations of a network in an extremely realistic manner, as well as a full SCADA system, which interacts with the simulation in real time. Within the SCADA system, we have implemented our advanced control strategy, which is based on the OPF. To help control engineers to visualize what's happening in the network, we have created an interactive user interface here. So this interface presents an overview of the network, showing some of the key values that might be interest. For example, the voltage, the line power flows, the demand, and the generation from wind farms. On the other screen, it allows the engineers to dive deeper into a particular area. Here, we have plotted the voltage at the bus bar the demand as well as the generation from the wind farm. To demonstrate our control algorithm, I will introduce an artificial ramp in the wind speed. After introducing the ramp, the wind power will go up and eventually this voltage will exceed the statutory limits indicated by this plot here as well as the flashing signals on the status screen. To address this problem, I'm going to manually trigger the OPF the system will run the optimization algorithm and then calculate the new set points. As you can see here, the power factor has changed for this wind farm, and this new power factor addresses the voltage problems we had previously. While I have manually triggered the operation this time, this process can be left automatically, for example, triggering every few minutes or after detecting a problem in the network. The next step is, of course, to look at larger networks where scalability will be an issue or not. And actually, we are already demonstrating this in offline studies. The next stage is to look at different interactions between distribution and transmission networks. What about the potential existence of distribution markets? Or even the modeling of low voltage networks integrated with medium voltage. The future is exciting and we're on the right track to really demonstrate that these techniques can actually be applied in the future by industry.